Investing based on environmental governance and social criteria, or ESG, continues to be exposed as a sham. Big investors such as Goldman Sachs and Germany's DWS are being challenged for greenwashing, overstating the importance of ESG and the portfolios they're running. Executives are coming clean and admitting that there's much less to ESG than many, many people think. Watch BlackRock's former CIO for sustainable investing, Tariq Fancy. The biggest problem is that there's evidence emerging that it's, it's becoming a placebo, a deadly distraction, because we're putting all our effort into this and we're ignoring what the experts are telling us, which is that we need policy reform in order to address our biggest social and environmental challenges. This really gets to the heart of it. Some investors have been avoiding traditional energy stocks in the hope that this would force them to change to focus on renewables. So how has that worked out? Well, it's been great for the investors who stayed in energy stocks and not so great for those who avoided them. But it's done more than just create good returns for the sector. The policy uncertainty around how we consume energy has caused oil and gas companies to cut their own investments in new supply. And you would too, if you sat on the board of an oil company. You see policymakers encouraging a negative view of traditional energy companies. Public policy is uncertain, so why would you commit capital for 10 years or more when you have no idea what governments may do in the meantime to allow you to sell your product? At SL Advisors, we invest in midstream energy infrastructure, that's pipelines, storage and processing. We sit between the producers of oil and gas and the customers, which are often utilities, export terminals or refineries. If you're interested in learning more about the energy sector and interest rates, then don't forget to subscribe and follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. Our handles are in the description box below. Exxon made more money than God this year. And by the way, nothing's changed. And they're not, by the way, one thing I want to say about the oil companies, they talk about how we have, they have 9,000 permits to drill. They're not drilling. Why aren't they drilling? Put aside the fact that he's an old man who stumbles across his thoughts. Two years ago in 2020, Exxon lost $22 billion. COVID was part of the reason, but it followed years of politicians like Joe Biden relentlessly criticizing energy companies for selling what consumers want to buy. This is the E in ESG. So energy companies are doing what politicians like Joe Biden have pushed for. They've reduced their spending on future production, and so prices have gone up. Higher prices on energy are necessary to get consumers and businesses to shift to low or no carbon energy sources because solar panels and windmills aren't competitive without subsidies and tax breaks. This should be completely obvious to everyone because if solar and wind were the complete solution, we'd already be using them. But we haven't had policies to make traditional energy more expensive because public support for efforts to fight climate change is broad but shallow. Climate extremists haven't persuaded consumers that we should pay for this. And the stock market doesn't seem too worried about climate change either. Its recent drop is because of inflation fears. So what we've got is higher energy prices without a carbon tax that could generate revenue for the country and send price signals about where to invest. Higher prices are benefiting OPEC. Look at the midstream energy sector where we invest. Companies are planning to keep their spending on new investments roughly flat over the next five years, but they're going to raise dividends and increase buybacks. This is because climate protesters have made it impossible to build new pipelines in America, even though there's demand for them. Joe Biden cancelled the Keystone Pipeline the day he came into office in a symbolic move that excited his liberal base. It was another clear message to energy companies that the federal government would penalize investments in the future. TC Energy is suing the federal government for $15 billion in losses. That's a powerful incentive for other pipeline companies to be very cautious about their own projects. During the shale revolution, energy companies overspent. This applied to some pipeline companies too. The ESG movement has helped achieve what investors wanted which is less spending. That's leaving more money to pay investors through higher dividends and buybacks. It's making the existing pipeline network more valuable. 
The CEO of Williams Company said this on a recent earnings call. And, you know, thanks to the, to the um, efforts of the environmental opposition of making pipeline permitting so difficult in the areas that we operate, it's allowed us much higher returns in that space than, than would normally be allowed. The result is that because ESG isn't solving the right problems, it's creating new ones for consumers and rewarding patient investors in the energy sector. Years ago, I thought climate extremists were trying to put us out of business, but now I have a finer appreciation for the positive impact they've had on the energy sector. They've been a poor substitute for thoughtful public policy, but they have helped impose more financial discipline on pipeline stocks. So I've come to like climate extremists a lot more as the sector has risen. If you meet a climate protester, give them a hug. Drive them to their next protest. In the meantime, let's focus on intelligent policies to combat climate change. Encourage more switching from coal to natural gas around the world. Use more nuclear. Tell people honestly that energy prices need to rise in support of the energy transition. As the bloom comes off ESG investing, it's an opportunity to tackle the underlying issues seriously and not just waste time with another investment fad. We manage investment products to profit from the outcomes I've discussed. To find out more about what we're thinking, sign up for our twice-weekly blog at sl-advisors.com. We always love to hear from you, so if you have any comments or blog ideas, please leave them down below. I'm Simon Lack. Thank you for watching this video.